Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Esper Draw Control. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. We're taking a break from the rotation proof today. We've done a lot of those in the last week or so, and they've been really fun, but uh, there's some natural issues that come up with playing a rotation proof deck prior to rotation, which is just that you're automatically limiting your card pool. Uh, and it's not even super accurate because you don't have the new cards in yet. So uh, while it is a fun experiment, and we'll probably continue that at some point, I did kind of want to take a step back and just enjoy the format a little bit as it stands before rotation actually happens. Uh, now with that, I was doing some research into some fun decks that I thought would look really interesting for the channel. And this one popped up from Swayze. So first of all, Swayze, thank you so much, my man. I really do appreciate you. Uh, if anybody doesn't know who Swayze is, please go check him out. Phenomenal content creator and really enjoyable to watch. Uh, as far as this deck goes, it's a control, Esper control deck uh, that's featured around drawing cards. So the whole idea uh, uh, is to get the Augur of Agonies down, which says whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Uh, so a little bit of draw, uh, drain life. Uh, and the idea is built around drawing extra cards with things like Wizard Class. Uh, which not only draws you cards, but gives you uh, no maximum hand size, and then of course you can throw some 1-1 one -one counters around at level 3. Uh, we've got Revitalize as our card draw of choice here, which also gains us some life. We've got Kaito, which can draw us some cards as well. Uh, Inscription of Insight, which is just a really good catch-all. We do have to remember this is sorcery speed. Uh, I often forget that, uh, just because I don't play enough with it. Uh, we do have Wire Tapping here, which is the hideaway enchantment from Streets, uh, which is whenever you draw your first card during each of your draw steps, draw an actual extra card. Uh, and then if you have nine or more cards in your hand, you can play the Exiled card, of course. Uh, we've got Behold the Unspeakable, which really takes advantage of having extra cards in hand uh, and can potentially fill up our hand a little bit, which is a nice uh, little addition. Uh, we actually have Seagate Restoration, of course, and then uh, Mordecai is in here as well as our Planeswalker of choice. Uh, the rest of the deck is basically removal, so we've got the four Doom Scars, two Voidrend, and four Vanishing Verse. Uh, very heavy removal package, but certainly good for the deck. Uh, and that's basically it. It's pretty straightforward, but I think it's a relatively interesting build because we don't normally see Esper go this direction. We normally see the Rafine decks, things like that. Uh, so for me... This really caught my eye. I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to share it with you guys. So again, I just want to say, uh, while I know this isn't rotation proof, I think it's going to be a fun time. Uh, I kind of wanted to take a step back from that a little bit. Uh, I also do want to remind you guys too, we have our Dominaria United giveaway going on right now. If you subscribe to the channel, you are entered to win. So I encourage you do that now. We'd really appreciate it. But without further ado, guys, let's go ahead. Let's jump in. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Definitely pretty good keeping this hand. I don't love the double auger, but we do have the Vanishing Verse plus Doomscar. We need some extra lands. That for sure would be helpful, but uh, overall, I think this is a reasonable enough start. Uh, and we do, hopefully, if we just get any land, that opens up some possibilities for us with the Doomscar potentially. Uh, and there we go. That's a good one. Um... Yeah, let's go ahead and throw the Seed of the Empire down here. As much as I'd, I would much rather kind of keep that in hand, uh, I think it's perfectly reasonable here to not, uh, and then we'll see what they actually take. So I'm actually going to show them one of these because I don't want to give them a land. <laughs> uh, they probably are very confused by that, but that's fine. Interesting. Okay, uh, that actually helps us quite a bit. So let's do this. Um... I think I will go ahead and throw this in the foretold zone. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, Vanishing Verse obviously can deal with the Acquisitions Expert. Not really all that worried about the Acquisitions Expert, to be honest. Um, don't love this, of course, but it's like not the end of the world. Um, hmm. Unfortunately, I think it's the Inscription. Uh, again, the land is what I want to get rid of, but we actually need both of these lands uh, pretty prominently for for the rest of the deck here, so I don't think we can really do that. Ah, uh, now I wish I had gotten the font. Uh, or the, not the font, the uh, auger. Uh, so the question becomes, do we just go for the Doomscar here? I actually don't think so. Um, I think we leave up the Vanishing Verse and uh, potentially just 
take a couple extra points of damage here. I'm not that concerned with two points of damage. Uh, the nice thing is we do actually get to recoup a lot of this from the auger. Uh, and so it's a relatively easy game plan here. Um, okay. Another Doom Scar. Okay, um, I'm actually, so I know this feels like a bit of an odd play, but I'm doing this now knowing that we may actually Doomscar at some point, but my point of this is we're baiting them into utilizing a removal spell now. Uh, if they don't have, or excuse me, if they have Vanishing Verse, obviously it doesn't do anything, but uh, if they do have any other removal spell, they'll probably be relatively tempted to use it. Uh, otherwise, we're going to start recouping some of that life. We're also going to start, uh, I mean, they can't really attack as it stands. Uh, and so we're actually going to be in a much better position if they don't remove this. Uh, if they do remove it, then we have Doomscar next turn, and then we're in much better shape. So really not that concerned uh, either way if this dies or doesn't. We will see. Uh, also, guys, we did release uh, a new little mini-series. Um, yep, there's the Deadly Dispute. Okay. Uh, released a new little mini-series yesterday uh, at noon uh, that John did. It's One Shot of Country, where he takes decks that you guys have given to him and kind of injects his own thoughts into it. Wow, double Deadly Dispute. So now we don't even have to burn the Doom Scar. That's That was kind of the hope. Um, so he's, uh, he's really injecting a lot of his own flair into the decks that he uh, is being sent, which I think is really awesome. Uh, I'm actually going to show the Doomscar. I want to keep the other Augur just in case here. I'm expecting they've got removal, uh, and so I think that's a better option. Nice. Extraction specialist. Okay. Uh, that's really fine. I don't particularly care. Now we will show them the Augur. Uh, that's easy enough. Very good. Uh, hmm. So I guess the correct thing is to attack first and see what happens. Um, if they decide they want to double block, that's great. Uh, yeah, this is really good. <laughs> okay. Um, perfect. So let's go ahead and hit this. Uh, this actually gets rid of... Yeah, there we go easy little play there, uh, which is tricky for them to deal with. We do only have a Kaito in our hands, uh, and they also know it's not a land. Oh no! Okay, fair enough. Uh, so that is going to get rid of the Augur here, which is perfectly reasonable. Uh, all that to say, guys, you should watch that series. That was where I was trying to go with that. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's make sure we get Kaito out there. We will go ahead and just drop the uh, ninja. Um, getting the attacks in here is potentially really good for us with the Wandering Emperor on the field. It's just going to keep her in check. Uh, and while, you know, the life total is still going to be a target at some point, that really does help us out a little. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we also do get, you know, at the very least, a card draw piece off of this. Um, sure. So they're going to take the Revitalize. That's perfectly reasonable. Um, yep. Hm. Okay. This is a very interesting little deck here that's just focused on, like, really many creatures and a lot of discard. Uh, which is fine. I mean, it's perfectly reasonable. Um, just kind of interesting. Uh, curious as to what they might do here. I'm assuming they have Vanishing Burst in the deck. Not willing to use it. Okay. Um, definitely just going to attack here. Uh, we're going to utilize that to draw a card. See what we get. Oof, not playable. Um, Alright, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and do this then. Uh, as much as I don't want to do that, uh, it keeps Kaito potentially on the board a little bit longer. Um, and, you know, the Wandering Emperor is down to one, so that plus ability isn't really all that helpful. Um, unless they play, of course, just a follow-up creature, which is perfectly fine. But... Wow, they're going to cash in the Wandering Emperor. Very interesting. Hmm. Would not have expected that, I'll be honest. Uh, but I am fine with it. Okay, cool. 
Unfortunately, we are getting very unlucky with lands. Uh, that's a very good one. All right, so we'll throw Kaito back. Let's do this. Um, I think I will go ahead and do this um, just to avoid them drawing extra cards here. I'm not positive that that's the right call. Both uh, the Doomscar and Behold the Unspeakable were very good options, but they still could have attacked. While they wouldn't have dealt damage, they would have drawn extra cards, and that's what we're not really happy about. Um, so they're going to be able to get rid of this Behold the Unspeakable. So now I'm actually kind of wishing I had done it the other way around, although um, it really isn't all that helpful to, to have that flipped uh, in the scenario that we are in currently. So... I am going to plus up here because we really do need to get something. Whoops. There we go. Let's go ahead and do this. Another Kaito. Uh, okay. Um. So, I mean, we could throw out the other Kaito. I don't think we do. Um, that would just allow us to phase it out. So in that scenario, we get a 1-1. We get to phase out the Kaito. They would have to attack us. I don't love that, though. Man, they're going to get to draw a lot of cards this turn. Uh, this is slowly slipping away, and I think a lot of it was down to we did not draw lands. Um, we played, I think, relatively well. Potentially could have done better, but um, I think we're just missing a lot of the important pieces right now. I was going to say, I'm kind of surprised they're going for me when they could kill Kaito. Uh, it looks like that is what they're going to do. Yep. Yep, yep. So they're going to get to draw two cards here, and this is going to transform. We'll go for the Behold play. Uh, which does kind of limit the amount of damage they're going to be able to do, but they still, of course, are going to get to draw an extra card and potentially even, you know, if they have a Vanishing Verse, for instance, they actually deal with the Unspeakable pretty well. Yeah, okay. Or they have a Rite of Oblivion, that's fair too. Uh, kind of surprised they didn't just attack first, just to get the extra card draw. I feel like that might be better, but I guess not. Okay, well, here we are. It's literally all we can do. Um, unfortunately, they have the Rite of Oblivion and just a token to toss to it, so not looking good for us, guys, I'll be honest. Oh, man. Okay. Yep. Uh, all right, taking four. Warmly embracing four to the face. All right. And we draw a light. <laughs> I mean, we play it uh, mostly because... There's really nothing else to do, but uh, I'm going to good game them here, guys. They definitely have us. Let's go ahead and concede. And let's move on to game two. Check out this month's Patreon rewards celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for our second game here. How do we feel about this hand? Um, I don't love it, however... Uh, we do actually have the makings of something really nice here, so I think we will try and keep this. I am not, surprisingly, going to go for the turn one wizard class, depending on the land we draw. Um, okay. Yes. Still not going to go for it. I think we're going to end up going the blue side here, but I think we're going to leave up that vanishing verse first. Um, may not even be worth it, to be honest. I don't know, but okay. Definitely going to be worth it. Never mind. All right. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and pull the trigger on this before they could uh, protection it, like Tamiya's intervention, whatever it is, rather than not have that ability. So I'm going to take the opportunity while they were tapped out there to, to pull the trigger on that. Um, but it looks like this is definitely just a werewolf deck, which is so fun. <laughs> um, let's make sure we get Kaito down. So this is actually going to help us obviously draw some cards here. We can get a uh, attack in. Uh, with the unblockable here if we need to, so this is definitely helpful. Looks like Naya Werewolves. Uh, funny enough, we played a rotation-free version of this uh, just the other day. Um, yep, there's the Brutal Cathar. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> it looks familiar. All right, sick. Uh, unfortunate that we can't really do too much, but that's okay. All right. They're gonna hit us for two, debating on which color mana it looks like. Okay, red, sure. 
kind of curious to see what they're doing with this red because it looks like we've got to play but maybe not i don't know they're not they're really thinking okay there we go the liberator sure great card Ooh, tricky um all right well first things first i think the play is definitely to do this uh now the question is what do we discard it might just be wiretapping uh they've got a liberator so like I don't really know how likely it is that we want to throw that out there. I'm going to try for the Augur here, um, and basically we're just kind of hoping they don't have another Brutal Cathar. Uh, and we're also hoping to dig in particular for a uh, Doomscar at this point. Really that's kind of the biggest bet for us, is to, to hopefully hit that. Nice. Great card. Uh, this does allow them to basically freely attack in if they have the attack. Um, they're reading, I believe. Okay. Sure. So they're going to get an attack in here for four. I'm curious if they're going to hit Kaito or if they're going to hit us. It looks like us. Uh, kind of an interesting play. I could see them wanting to kill Kaito, uh, but looks like they're not going to. Now do we think they have a burn spell? I'm going to say no. I think it's worth it to try and keep the auger around. If they have it, they have it, but... Uh, this is a pretty big impact spell for us, so I want to make sure that we've got it on the field for the long haul if we can. All right, so they do, but they're going to hit the uh, the Kaito. Sure. Ooh, that's actually very, very good for us. Uh, so this allows us... Hmm. We've got options here. So we can Vanishing Verse and Wizard Class. Um, alternatively, we can just Behold the Unspeakable. Uh, to basically take away a lot of what they had planned, potentially. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the big play. I don't know that this is 100% correct. I'll be honest, uh, and I'm also not gonna attack in because they do give something plus two plus two here. So I think this is probably the best bet. Uh, they can use the liberator to kill uh, if they would like, uh, which is perfectly reasonable. That's super scary. Uh, and Vanishing Verse does not hit that, which is worth noting. Um, but they are out of spells. So again, like a Doom Scar would be amazing. Uh, it would just really set us up for a good play. Um, they really don't have a good attack here, so I'm assuming they won't. I'm curious if they go for the Liberator and just sacrifice it to kill the Behold. Uh, I think it's probably worthwhile, yeah. All right, cool. Seems fine to me. Um, I think we're going to need to deal with that Howling Moon uh, because otherwise they're going to start getting a lot of extra 2-2s, two basically, and I don't particularly love that idea. Um, all right, let's do this. Do we want to exile this or do we want to exile any of these is the question. I'm actually going to go creatures here. This might be incorrect. I have no clue. Uh, let's go here. I am going to attack here. And if they want to double block, we will 100% block the naturalist. Basically, we're just trying to diminish their board enough that they don't have a lot of great plays. Uh, so if they want to double block, they can double block. But we are going to kill the naturalist in response. Uh, now they do get to attack in with Arlen. Or no, excuse me, they get to plus up with Arlen. So, n unless it's Nightbound, they can't. Okay, sick. Alright, well... Ooh, that's a very good play. Alright. That's a very, very good play. Yep. Alright, so they're gonna get a very strong attack in for 5. Uh, thanks to this. So again, Doomscar is, like, <laughs> high on the list of cards we want. It is not a doom scar. Um, okay, uh, I'm gonna go this route. Let's see. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to draw here. Uh, give me something, oh, man. 
Man, we are not getting lucky here. Um, all right. We do get to kind of make everything happen, but obviously they just get free wolves, which is kind of the bad part about all this. Yeah. Uh, we could have drawn an extra with Kaito, which might have been useful, but I think we just die if we do that. Um, because they get to plus up and do quite a bit here. So, yeah, I think, I think we're slowly slipping away here again, which is very unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, we're obviously just going to block the biggest thing, because we literally have to. Um, I'm assuming they spread this out to a 3-3. Yeah, that makes sense. So then we block a 5-5, five, five, taking 7. <laughs> Alright, let's plus up. Jeez. Uh, actually. No, yeah, that's definitely right. Man. Um... I mean, we're just dead. <laughs> well, good game him. Oh, man, that's so unfortunate. If we had gotten, got, I think, if we had gotten a Doom Scar, it would have been one, two, three, four, five, and then we would have had a land in hand. So we probably could have, I don't know, would have been tricky. But let's go ahead, let's wrap this one up. I know we only got two games in, but that tends to be the case when we're playing control decks. So let's go ahead and talk about this. All right, so unfortunately, no wins uh, from this deck, but we did only get two games in. Um, and I think this this deck is a really cool idea, which is why it really caught my eye in the first place. I think obviously if you're looking for a tier one Esper deck, you're going to be looking at like a Rafine deck or just a straight up, you know, Blood on the Snow Control, Vanishing Verse, all, all in on the removal package. Um, and this is not that. Uh, I think that's very important to note. Um, now, I do think, again, this could use some work to boost it up, uh, but I do think Swayze did a really good job of putting together a list here that features what he was trying to feature, which is the Augur of Agonies or whatever it's called. Um, <laughs> I can't remember that name. Um, what That was the goal of the deck, was to be able to draw a lot of cards with that on the field. We saw it start to get there. We didn't really get to capitalize on it as much as I would have liked to, uh, but we did kind of see it do its thing, especially in game one, where we were starting to gain a lot of life back. And I think that's worthwhile. Um, I think there's something to that, but uh, it obviously didn't do as well as we were hoping, and that's okay. Uh, regardless, I do appreciate the deck, Swayze. Thank you so much for sharing this one over on Aether Hub, and of course, just being a freaking cool content creator. If you guys don't know Swayze, go check him out. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you enter the Dominaria United giveaway. Again, that will be announced on September 16th. Uh, and so if you want to enter that, subscribing is only one of four free ways to enter. You can check out the video on our landing page or the article on our website at resolvesmtg.com. Links are down below. But guys, thank you so much. I love you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you again tomorrow.